What's going on guys, Jonathan Dietz here. It is summertime, we are up north and we're throwing some of my favorite finesse baits and it got me thinking about how a lot of the bigger tournaments you see these days, Bassmaster Opens, MLF Toyota Series events, even tour level events are starting to get won on more and more finesse baits because of the pressure we have out there on the water. So today we're gonna break down some of my favorite finesse baits, how I use them, how I fish them. We're gonna do it right now. So right here, right now, we are out on a body of water that has big flats on it and you're looking for little isolated differences. And those are some pretty pressured areas because on a lake that doesn't have a lot of irregularities, once you find one, it can be really key, but it also gets a lot of pressure. And so that's why we're downsizing to some of these finesse baits to hopefully get some better bites on trick some of these fish that are seeing a lot of baits. And they pull up here like nobody's business. Lift them right up in. So there's one on a drop shot with a little finesse worm on there. It's just a Z-Man finesse worm. And it's just a different look. You know, a lot of guys might be throwing a finesse jig or any other kind of bait that really, it just has a bigger profile, but this one just has that nice shimmy to it, nice slow fall on it. It just has some great action to it. And it got us, not a giant one, but it's a start. So right here we have a Z-Man finesse worm and where most guys might come through here throwing a swim bait or uh, throwing a Carolina rig or some of these power fishing techniques. But right now I opted to go to this finesse worm because we have light winds, we have high, si high skies. And so this is just a finesse way to go back through and catch these fish that a lot of guys are missing. So some of the advantages of throwing a finesse presentation as opposed to throwing a power fishing technique is most guys don't like to throw a spinning rod, but when you do, we have one single hook which has a high hookup ratio and a drag system that is super controlled. So once those fish eat it and you reel down and lean on those fish, you can kind of just almost guarantee you're gonna have them. And so you can really just take your time with those fish, tire them out and land almost every single one of your fish. The hookup percentage and land ratio is just insane with the finesse technique like this. So right here we have one isolated boulder. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna position myself downwind of it using my Garmin trolling motor to just kind of keep us in place. And then with that pan optics, I'm just gonna see where that is. You can see some fish popping up on the screen. I'm gonna lob it over there and give it slack when it's falling so that way it has a nice straight fall. And then I'm gonna let it get down by those boulders. Right there, it hit the bottom. And then all I'm gonna do is give it a slow drag. I see a lot of guys giving their baits too much action. And the reason we're doing these finesse techniques is because we don't want as much action. And so I call it the eerie drag where you kind of just pick up your slack and then pull it because that bait has so much action on its own down there that you don't have to put into it that it just really catches the fish for itself once you get them down in the right areas. As soon as it got down there. As soon as we got down there on that boulder again, got bit again. Not a giant by any means, but able to go behind people and still catch more fish. That's why I like throwing a drop shot because every one of them, you can see how they get that hook in the roof of their mouth. It comes right out by where their nostril would be. And like you can see, unless I break that fish off, there's no way that's coming off. And whether the fish is 12 inches or, or 12 pounds, it's gonna do a very similar thing. And that trocar hook, it laser sharp. You reel light it right into them and you, you can count on every one coming right to the boat with that setup. There, got it. Little guy. So we kind of worked through it with a drop shot just to see what they would do. And then they kind of got keyed into that suspended bait. So then we switched up to a Ned rig with that Z-Man football head on there just to get a little bit better or heavier fall and picked up one right away. A little guy, but we're going to see if there's not a couple bigger ones right around in there. So the reason that I would pick up a Ned rig versus a drop shot right now, I have a little gravel bar in front of me that I know there's fish set up on and I know there's fish there. And so what I can do is really just drag this and give it a downsized presentation. And it's just, it's probably my most finesse presentation that I'm gonna throw. Oh, that's a good one. Would you look at that? Took me like six seconds. That might even be like the biggest one of the day so far. And I thought it was gonna be a rock bass or something. Suckers are fighters. 
you don't like catching smallmouth, you really don't like fishing. Not a bad one. Bring him right up here and we'll grab him. Where is he at? There he is. Oof, you come here. He's a decent one. Little Ned Rig right in his mouth. Probably no better smallmouth bait than a Ned Rig, but it's also just a great bait to slow down with and, and get bites when nothing else will. So the reason a Ned Rig does such a good job at getting bites when nothing else will is because of the almost do nothing action. If you think about the majority of the baits or the critters that live on the bottom, they don't really have a whole lot going on. Their bodies are streamlined. That's how nature kind of developed them. That's how evolution has succeeded. And that's kind of what this represents. And with the Z-Man Velaztec, the plastic, it keeps it a little bit higher buoyancy, so it kind of floats. And it's just something that looks not specifically like anything, but a lot like everything. And with its small presentation, and like I said, the, the fact that it doesn't really have a ton of action, it just makes it a perfect little meal. And so those fish that have seen crankbaits with rattles, you know, spinner baits with vibration, chatter baits with vibration, even football jigs bouncing around on the bottom, all the secondary action that these baits have. With this one having such little action, it just does a great job at being a cleanup bait than going behind, whether you're on Gunnersville, any, any Tennessee River chain, whether you're in the south on Texas, guys catch giant fish on Ned Rigs there, or whether you're up in the north like we are today, man, it just gets bites when nothing else will. Soon as it got down there, one oh, he come back after it. <laughs> that was crazy. There's five of them down there. You couldn't even see them because they were on the bottom, but they came right up to it, and like you'd miss one, and you'd throw back in there, and you'd get another one right away. And that's just that scent of jerk shads that everybody knows and loves so much. Not a giant one, but just a fun way to catch them. So right now we're throwing a scented jerk shad, so also another Z-Man bait, and uh, that, that scented part of it really helps seal the deal when those fish are being really difficult. And we have that Z-Man head on there, which is keeled just right, with that tapered head on there with those big eyes on there. It gives it a real lifelike presentation. It's just a way, they call it moping, they call it, there's so many different names to it, but it's just basically a minnow jerk bait style that's uh, just rigged on a jig head like this, and you drift it right over top of their heads. So the reason this bait is a staple in my rotation is because when you get fish chasing bait, when you get fish that are extremely pressured, they just suspend and they get away from all those bottom bouncing baits. When they are bait fish oriented, a lot of times they are mid column and up, or even if they're just chasing bait, they won't even look down on the bottom. And so that's why I have this as a staple in my arsenal because it's just a great way to give them an actual bait fish presentation with zero sound, zero vibration, and just keep it above their heads. So in this case, I'm not fishing necessarily suspended fish, I'm fishing for fish on isolated rock piles, but it's a great way to give those fish a different look and to fish it fast because I can throw it over top of those rock piles and pull it through and get those fish to come up and eat it. And with that bigger jig head, I can just have a lot better hookup ratio when I do get one to eat it. That took two seconds to get another one. Cause it's just something that they don't see. And we're catching a lot of smallmouth, but it also works great with largemouth. When they're suspended around bait, it works phenomenal in the fall. And what I love about it is the hookup ratio on this bait too. If you look at how that hook is positioned in there, there is no way that fish was coming off unless I break it off. And so that's the same thing it does with largemouth too, is it's just a great way to really catch those fish that have seen a lot of pressure and are suspending. So we just swung into a canal here so I can kind of show you my my alternating baits that I throw on my finesse setups when I get into some of these high pressure situations or when I'm just tournament fishing in general. And so the three that I have laid out right here is the first one is a Ned Rig. Obviously this is just a Z-Man Ned Rig, a regular TRD in the deal color. Throw that on a little football Ned head. That way I can get a little bit better feel in some deeper water. And I pair all of these with an Arc Essence 7-1 medium heavy spinning rod paired with a Shimano Corrado or any, basically any Shimano reel. They're all really, really well built. And I pair that with a P-Line 
spin X braid in a 10 pound to a P-Line Tactical Fluorocarbon 7 to 12 pound leader, depending on which model or uh, which size weight I'm throwing. But uh, yeah, that, that TRD is a great finesse option. Then my drop shot setup, throwing just a Z-Man finesse worm, just nose rigged. And right now I was throwing the green pumpkin version, but when I get out and I'm getting around to some southern largemouth, I like to go to that June bug or that pink worm style. That's just a great color that we all know works so well once that water gets a little stained. And a finesse worm is just a great option when those fish are getting really pressured. Now the last one that I throw is going to be that, uh, that Z-Man scented jerk shads. That's a great option for when those fish are suspended around bait. And I'm just pairing that with a Z-Man minnow heads and I'm throwing that on the same setup, but I will beef the leader up to 12 or 15 pound because a lot of times when you get into those suspended fish, they just get to a better quality. And obviously they really don't care about line size too much when you put it right over their heads. And the only time something comes from below a bass is when it's triggering the bass as prey or targeting the bass as prey. So I like to keep that bait above their heads and in front of them at all costs. So next time you guys are practicing for a tournament or fishing around a body of water that is extremely pressured, don't be afraid to pick up some of these finesse techniques. If you rotate through these three finesse techniques, you can catch a lot of fish and also catch some big fish. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you learned something and catch y'all later.